Uh, one of the uh, things I've asked to do is kind of show some of the tools maybe that we use to keep students' attention a little bit, kind of keep them on task with what we're doing. And most of you know I'm extremely low tech. I really don't, uh, computers are something that I just, I'm still in the process of trying to understand what they are. The first day to have my wife, she asked me what I knew about computers, and I told her absolutely nothing. She said, good, we're getting married. <laughs> uh, she worked in the, in the IT world, like she started a company, went from zero to NASDAQ, and just didn't want to come home and talk about computers. So, I'm, uh, so she got somebody really good in that thing. But one of the things, I remember when I was in school in fifth grade, as I was looking back on the, you know, what, what did I like, what didn't I like at those ages, is teachers would quite often uh, put up a map like this. And this, this is an example of, a, of a, this, this is the second day at the Battle of Gettysburg. Now, you look at this map, is it clear or confusing? I mean, you're looking at positions of, of, of troops and you're describing a battle or something. This is position one, position two, position three. This is, you know, different sides and things. You know, the blue and the gray and the red and things like that make it a little bit clearer. But where are they moving from to and why and what sequence and what time of day and what was happening? Uh, was difficult for me to kind of uh, understand. So I, I was, was thinking about this and I thought, well, what if, what if you came up with a way maybe to uh, let the students follow this, not in, of course, real time, but just in what is happening now here and what is happening there. Uh, this, this is a map I drew, for instance, the Battle of Gettysburg. Now, the way I do these is I'll just get a, a map that I like, it's a good clear map or something, and put it on an overhead projector and I'll just project it on a whiteboard and I'll just trace it, basically. The first couple of years I was freehanding uh, these things with various degrees of success. Uh, but I found that, you know, you get into more detail and it just, it just looked better when I was tracing it than my, my idea of what Cuba kind of sort of looked like versus what it actually does, for instance. But with a map like this, you can, you can start out, uh, like here's the start of the Battle of Gettysburg. If I were going to start this battle, I'd say, okay, well, here's a, Here's a division of troops. Uh, I would incorporate before this, of course, the geography of the area. I might have a, I might have an overhead or a, or a PowerPoint showing what the what these features actually look like, so they have it in their head what the terrain looks like. And down here, of course, at a round top and different positions on this battlefield that were key in the battle. I might first of all show them pictures of those things so they have an understanding of it, and then we can refer to that map. So these ridges over here that I draw. Has some, they have some idea what that ridge really looks like. Does that make sense? And then I can actually take these and show them, well, as these troops are moving up in position the night before, and Harry Heath's division comes down the road, and they have to stop, and it takes an hour for them to deploy a, their first brigades here in line to make the attack, while well, the rest of these troops are coming and moving down from Chambersburg. I can talk about what happens at that point in the battle. Then at the same time, down here at the south end of the field, in is coming, you know, the first corps. So you can actually see where the troops are moving here a little bit at a time while these troops are coming down. And you can kind of let the students let them follow the battle uh, and make it a very complex battle actually uh, kind of come alive to them in a way that, you can, that they can actually follow it. Uh, another map over here that I put on the board is, is uh, this is Columbus's first voyage. So here's a map of the central Bahamas, for instance. And sometimes I'll put a smaller uh, map over here in the corner showing this this is the area that I, I've blown up over here for instance. So you can see from here where uh, Cuba is in, in relationship like to Florida. And uh, you know, of course we'll have the main map they can look at all this in advance and see these kind of features and terrain or you know different geography features. And then with a map like this you can incorporate in the lower grades for instance we're still trying to teach them directions and we can say okay so Columbus is here at this point uh, and he goes uh, this direction for this long, where's he going to be at, you know, things like this. So you can incorporate geography into this. You can use maps like this for set. Uh, you can use it for a lot of things. Now th this is just one map that actually projected up here and trace around it that you can use. Uh, there are other ways you can do this. You, you can actually just project a map on a board like this from your overhead, lower your lights, and you can uh, just trace around. And then when you turn your overhead off, you maybe have Columbus's voyage track through here without the islands would disappear, but that would be a simple way to do it. But a map like this really only takes uh, probably 15 minutes to, to trace off like this. It's not a huge amount of work, in my experience. You can do it pretty fast. 
and get them, you know, but the detail, it kind of, it lets them see kind of what it looks like. For instance, this story, I might history bring uh, Columbus up to maybe uh, 10 o'clock on October 11th and be telling the story of uh, what's going to happen, uh, you know, on October 8th when the crew said, you know, we'll go for three more days and then we are basically on the morning of the 12th, uh, Columbus, uh, the expedition was to be over. Uh, Columbus would not be coming back with it. And uh, so that night as he's crowding sail, coming down in the southwesterly direction, following a flock of birds the day before, I usually try to take the class up to this point at 10, 10 p.m. on October 11th. And what happened at that point? And of course, that's the point where he sees a light. And so kind of as an aid over here, sometimes I might just track out or put over here on the side of the board kind of the sequence of things that's going to happen. I don't always do this, but it, it's a kind of a tool that you can use to follow what's happening next. When you're up here teaching, you don't have to be looking at notes. You can just look at the board and here are your notes, and they can kind of anticipate the story a little bit sometimes, but they don't usually concentrate on this. But they do follow your map, and you can say, okay, 10 o'clock, he's here, and then uh, four hours later, he, he's at this point, what do they see? You know, the Pinta fires a cannon in Columbus. They see a beach in the, in the, in the moonlight, and, and here's what's happened. And the larger map up here allows me to tell, okay, now here's where Columbus was on this day, and if he had not, the voyage had not gone this direction, he was heading straight west, where would he have landed? In Florida. Except that he never would have got there because the voyage would have been over here before they saw, ever saw Florida. So you can, you can tell these you know, stories with it, but one of the tools I use to kind of keep the, the class on, on track or engage with is, are these maps like this. A lot of times with these uh, battle maps, as you might call them, I'll, put the, I'll bring the battle to a certain point and then ask the students, okay, you're the general now. What are you going to do? It's very easy to be a Monday morning quarterback and say this is what they should have done to win the game. If you're in this position and you're the commanding general, what would you do? And let them kind of uh, think it through and see that, uh, you know, if I do this and they do that, then, you know, how does it move? Because war is largely a large chess game to a degree, so it allows them to kind of think in advance. And they come up and move these little pieces. So uh, they can come up here and say, well, I would take this and I would run around here and I'd do this or whatever, you know, they're in their minds, whatever they would do. And then you can say, well, if you thought about this or this or this, as a consequence of that. So by using this, the students can actually come up here and move the piece like in a, in a chess game. And then they can actually kind of have an opportunity to see what would I have done. And then uh, when it's all over done, I'll put things back where they were and say, okay, well, let me show you what actually happened. Maybe your idea would have been better but maybe this would have been a result of it as well. So it's really easy to criticize, not always easy to be in that position. But anyway, these are some of the, a couple of tools that I use just to try to keep their interest and attention. I'm sure there's a lot of ways you could do this. Uh, I've done interactive maps on a, on a PowerPoint that might take 40 hours to put together. So this is something I can do quickly. Uh, you know, 20 minutes, you can have a map up here and the students are following it and seeing what you're doing. And I think it keeps them where they see the story better. For my kind of my sense of it, and slow tech is required. I don't have to run down and get Melanie to help me do these. So she's very good. At that. Which is almost more engaging now because they're so much, they're so used to the high tech. It's like wow, whiteboard. Somebody drew that. I mean, this could be like people still actually, actually use those. The it's the way we felt about PowerPoint. Before. Yeah, th this is really high tech. You pull the cap off. And you <laughs> that. Yeah, and sometimes I see that at the university. It's like the, the students when they're doing presentations. It's, PowerPoint after PowerPoint after PowerPoint after PowerPoint, and you just kind of tune them out. They're overused, in my opinion. So sometimes, just uh, just as a break even from it, uh, doing something simple like this, uh, the students can follow up. And it does give them that interact uh, ability to come up and interact with it all. So I'll fill, you know, like Columbus, I'll show where the voyage comes down here, and I'll put little anchors or little marks where I might be able to follow a, a complicated route to wind up down here. And you'll be telling the story, and just they can actually see the voyage progressing. And what's he seeing? You pull out the logbook. As he's coming down from San Salvador towards Ferdinia, he's seeing like hundreds of islands appearing out of the ocean. Why? What, what's he seeing? And you read the logbook, and he says, that's hills, and then out of the ocean, of course, comes the islands. So first you see the tops of the hills, and then things come out. So in their mind, they're also right there on the deck of the Santa Maria. Uh, coming up and seeing what he's seen as it's being described. So it, in a very real way, it puts them in, in the place as, as close as you can, I think, in this day and age. But 
Anyway, what it feels like. Any questions, comments, or? I'm gonna say bravo. This is really exciting. <laughs> I wanna go do something at home. Like this summer doing that. Well anyway, just one of the little things we do, but I think we're time to roll on, I believe. Thank you. Anyway.